we're going to start with the name of this holiday, the holiday that's coming up. The name is Purim, and that's what we're going to concentrate on. Why such a funny name for such a holiday? So let's look at source number one. This is from Gilat Esther. It says, Bachodesh Arishon Hu Chodesh Nisan, in the first month is the month of Nisan, Bishnat Shtemesre Lamelech Achashverosh, in the twelfth year of the king of Achashverosh, Hepil Pu, he made a lot. Hu Hagoral, this is the Goral, Lifnei Aman, before Haman, Miyom Liyom Mechodesh Lechodesh, Haman made a lot from on a daily things and on a monthly thing, Shnei Masar, Hu Chodesh Adar. And it came up to the 12th month, which is the month of Adar. The 12th month from Nisan is Adar. And source number two, continue with Mirat Esther. Al Ken Karu Yamim Ha'ele Purim, Al Shem Purim. This is why they call this holiday Purim, because of the lot, because of the Pur. Now, if you think about it, it's a funny name. Because let's, let's take other holidays. Pesach. Why do we call Pesach Pesach? Because God skipped over the houses of the Hebrews. And only he killed the Egyptians, the firstborn Egyptians in their houses. While the Hebrew houses he skipped. That's why we call it Pesach. Right? Why do we call Sukkot Sukkot? Because the people sat in Sukkot when they left Egypt. Right? Clouds of glory or regular Sukkot, it doesn't matter, but look of Sukkot. Hanukkah, why do we call Hanukkah Hanukkah? Again, because of the miracle. They rested on the 25th of them. Over here, Purim has to do something with the miracle? No, Purim is the opposite. Purim is the lot that what happened on, on that day, on the lottery. We call it Purim because the lottery, that was the decree that came to the Jewish people. That doesn't make sense. That's not the celebration. What's the cele- what are we celebrating? That Haman made lots in 12th of Ad- and the month of Adar was chosen to kill the Jews? That's a celebration? That doesn't make sense. So let's look. Benogele Yemei HaPurim, when it comes to the days of Purim, Shalehem Neemar, Layehudim Aita, Ora, Vesimcha, Vesason, Vikar, to the Jews it was a joy and celebration and honor. We have to concentrate on the name that God gave this holiday. If you look at the verses, it says, This is why they call these days Purim. Because of the lot. Because Haman made a lottery. Because made a lottery. And he thought that the 12 months is not going to be good for the Jewish people. But then he turned around. And we won the war. And we won the war against our enemies. But we need to understand. In the Megillah itself it says, It says he made poor. And you should know what's the poor. This is the goral. This is the lot. Vehainu, which means, shekevan shetevat poor eina belashon hakodesh. The word poor is not in Hebrew. What is it in? In Persian. The word poor is in Persian. Ela belashon paras madai. It's in the Persian language. Tzrichim lefaresh velomar, the Megillah itself, Mordechai had to tell us. You know what's poor? Because no, we're not going to know poor, we're not Persians. So said, later generations, how would they know what poor is? So he tells them, you know what poor means? Poor, who a goral? Poor is the lats. So if this is so, when they establish the holiday, because of the name of Pur, Avur Bnei Israel, for the Jewish people, you need to tell them, because they don't know Persian, so you need to tell them, what is Pur? Pur means lottery. 
היו צריכים לקרות גולל, או לשון רבים, פורים גורלות. So it doesn't make sense if you want... Yeah, instead of saying פורים in the language of the Persians, say it in which language? In Hebrew. Instead of calling call it פורים, call it גורל or גורלות. Yeah, call it either גורל or גורלות. In source number three, it tells us that פור לשון פרס ופירושו לשון גורה. That פור is a Persian a language and it means גורל, which means lottery. Okay. Before we even start, we're going to try to understand how this Purim happened. So we all know that Purim happened with Haman. And who was Haman? Haman came from Amalek, from the time of Amalek. Now, where did the tribe from Amalek come to? If you remember, Esav and Yaakov were brothers. And Esav wanted to kill Yaakov because he stole the firstborn. Esav also had a son called Elipaz, right? And Elipaz had a son that was called Amalek. So the grandson of Esav is Amalek. That's where it started. And because Esav hated Yaakov because he stole the firstborn, Elipaz didn't hate Yaakov, but it says that Timna, Am- Amalek uh, married Timna, it was... Uh, They hate, he hated Yaakov from both sides. He and, and uh, Timnah sides, and they both hated Yaakov, and that's why the descendants hated Yaakov. Years later, we all know that um, King Saul was told by Shmuel to kill all of Amalek, and he killed all of them, except the king, Agag, if you remember. And Agag, he didn't kill, and when... Um, Shmuel came to King Saul and he told him, why didn't you kill him? So he said, I made a mistake, I'm going to kill him right now. So Shmuel told him, ah, I know you made a mistake, but you're going to pay for the mistake. What, what's going to happen? We're going to take the kingship from, away from you. That's going to happen. And that night that he left him alive, he was able to be with another woman. And the Amalekites continued from them until Haman. Okay? So let's look inside. We're going to skip for now page five. Let's go to page six. And we're going to go back later on to page five. So let's look at the source where it all started. So it says, Vayikra Shem HaMakom Masao Meriva. After they left Egypt, the Jewish people, they came to a place that was called Masao Meriva, that was called quarreling, fighting, because over there they didn't have water and they started fighting with Moshe. Complaining again, you brought us to the desert to kill us? Why are we, why are we doing here? Al riv bnei Israel, because the Jewish people fought against God, against Moshe. Ve al nasotam et Hashem leemor, hayesh Hashem bekirbenu imayin. And they tried God, and they told to God, we don't, they told Moses, is God with us or not? That was the complaint. Ve yavo Amalek, and right after the complaint came Amalek, וילחם עם ישראל ברפידים, and he fought with the Jewish people in רפידים. See, this is where we introduced to the nation of Amalek. Now let's look inside. Rashi says, ויבוא Amalek, it says, you know why it tells you an Amalek came? שמח פרשה זו למקרזה. He put the parasha of Amalek immediately next. to the fact that they quarreled against Moshe and against God, and they said, Hayesh Hashem begirbenu imayin. They said, is God with us or not? Why are they together? Lomar, to tell us, Tamid ani beinechem, that God told them, I'm always amongst you, umezuman lekol tzarkechem, and I'm always ready for whatever you need. ואתם אומרים, היש השם בקרבנו עם עין? And you said, is there God with us or not? חייכם, you're going to see, שהכלב בא ונושך אתכם. The dog is going to come and bite you. ואתם צועקים לי, and then you're going to shout to me, ותדעו היכן אני, and then you're going to know where I am. And then Rashi gives us an analogy. משל לאדם, this is a simile to a person. שהרכיב בנו על כתפו ויצא לדרך. He took his son on his shoulder and he went on the way. 
היה אותו הבן רואה חפץ ואומר, The child saw an object and he said to his father, אבא תול חפץ זה ותן לי והוא נותן לו, he says, father, take this object and give it to me. And the father gave it to him. וכן שנייה וכן שלישית, happen a second time, it happen a third time. פגעו באדם אחד, they, found, they went around and they met a man, אמר לו אותו הבן, the son which is still on his father's shoulders, is asking the man, ראית את אבא? Did you see my father? אמר לו אביו, his father told him, אינך יודע היכן אני? He says, don't you know where I am? The whole day you've been asking for things and I've been giving it to you on top of my shoulder. יש ליחו מעליו, he threw him away from him, הוא בא הכלב ונשכו. Came the dog and he beat him. So we're going to understand this Rashi with Amalek now. So let's go back to page 5. קושייה זו מתחזקת יותר על פי המבואר בכמה מקומות. This question becomes even stronger according to what we find in many places. השייכות של גורל לגזירת המן שהייתה בפורים. What is this lottery and what is המן? What's happening over here? So let's see. עניינו של המן מתחיל מעמלק. המן, the reason why he acted the way he acted, is because he was עמלק. And what's עמלק? עליו נאמר, און עמלק, it says, ראשית גויים עמלק. It says, a leading nation is עמלק. ואחריתו עדי עובד. But in the end, he's going to be completely killed. The nation of עמלק. ואחר כך יצא ממנו המן, and then המן כמן אופן. כמבואר בתרגום, היחוס של המן עד עמלק. Like we see in the תרגום, that it says המן, אני אתן להם it's called המן האגגי. You remember in the מגילה it says המן האגגי, who's אגג? He's the king of the עמלק. ובהקדים ביאור עניינו של עמלק. So we have to understand what is this עמלק thing. So let's see. הסיבה לכך שעמלק יכול להיטפל לבני ישראל היא, says, how come nobody else went and fought against the Jewish people, only עמלק, it says, כתוצאה מזה שבא יצר הרע, it says, what is this עמלק? it says, this עמלק is not only out there in the world, it's not just a nation, you know where it also is? in us. So the Yetzir HaRa in us comes, who matchil it on, and you know what he says? He says to you, your Yetzir HaRa says to you, Ram al kol goyim avaye. He says you should know you don't honor God enough. God is very, very high. That's what Yetzir HaRa tells you. In other words, he's more religious than what? Than you. He's telling you, you should know God is so high, היינו שהקדוש ברוך הוא נמצא למעלה, which means that God is so high, ואילו המטה הוא נמוך יותר מדי בשביל להתעסק עמו. And over here the world, that's not meaningful for him. You want to tell me that God cares how you shecht, if you eat this animal or you eat that animal? That God carry, if you carry a coin on Shabbos from one place to another? You think he cares? You think he's got nothing to do in his life? You think that's what troubles him? God is high. God is uh, lofty. God is holy. He doesn't care about nonsense. ומצד זה שואלים בני ישראל, היש השם בקרבנו עם עין? And this is why the Jewish people are asking, is God with us or not? So let's understand. What do you mean? What kind of stupid question is this? Hashem just took them out of Egypt. They saw the miracles in Egypt. Right? They saw the splitting of the Red Sea. What do, you mean, what, what do they mean, is God with us? Of course God is with you. But of course he's with him. They just saw it. They, they saw it with their own eyes. So how can they, five minutes later, ask this Moshe, is God with us? How is that possible? So the answer is, close to what you're saying, the answer is, They knew that God takes care of the nation. But on a regular day life, where you're supposed to do your job, right? You're supposed to go to your work. You're supposed to do stuff. Yeah? So where does the money come from? From your work or from God? 
from doing. He says, there, at regular work, everyday work, you know, God wants us me to do it. So if he wants me to do it, you know who is not here? He is not here. Who decides if I'm going to become rich or not? I decide. People who work hard become rich. People who don't work hard become poor. Does God get involved in it? He doesn't get, get, get involved in it. That's what they were thinking. Everyday life is not in the hands of God. And then, when we ask about regular matter of the world, is God with us or not? Then you know what's going to happen? Comes the Malek, comes the evil inclination. Just like the analogy of a, a, a person who puts his son on his shoulder, when they met a person, the son asked him, did you see my father? And he forgot that for the last 10 days, he's been on his father's shoulders and his father is giving him everything that he needs. His father told him, you don't know where I am. He threw him off him and came the dog and beat him. So let's see inside. We are on page six, all the way in the bottom. Lichora, it says, it doesn't make sense. Haitachen she bnei Israel shualim ayesh Hashem bekirbenu. How is it that the Jewish people are asking, is God with us? Harei ze ata yatsu mi Mitzrayim v'ra'u nisim just now. They left Egypt. They saw all the miracles of Egypt. K'mo she katuv, just like they said. Vayar Israel, and they saw the Jewish people, ve'ad she'amru zekeli, that everyone was able to point and says, here, this is God. She'ayu mar'im oto be'etzba, they showed him with his finger. Achayinian hu, but the matter is, she'zehu rak bish'atanes, that it's true. They saw God, when? When God did the miracle. At the moment God did the miracle, of course you see him. You see the miracle. Be'et Yitziat Mitzrayim, the time of the, they left Egypt, Kriyat Yam Suf, the, the, type, the time of the splitting of the Red Sea. But afterwards, when they started moving, and now they have to look for food, now they have to look for water. After they walked from the splitting of the Red Sea, now they have to rely on nature. In other words, you don't go out to look for water, you become thirsty. You don't go up to look for food, you become hungry. Now comes the evil inclination, comes the Malek, and you know what he tells you? Until the person says to himself, in my business, when I do stuff in my business, I'm allowed to shave a corner over here? I'm allowed to shave a corner over there? Because God is not there. And how do I know God is not there? Because if I would trust God, I would never try to do something hanky-panky with the business. I would never try to cut corners over here or cut corners over there. I trust in God. If a person starts starting to think, I have to do this or I have to do that and I have to do this in order to, to do that, ah, you're pretty much saying, is God in my business or not? Says the fact that God is protecting you in shul, the fact is God is protecting you from your enemies, that you agree. But is God in my business? That's what you're asking? Hayesh Hashem bekirbenu im ein, im hu bekirbenu, shino bekirbenu. But now, is God with us when we go through nature or is he not? Hu lo mer sheino mamin ba Hashem. Amalek, listen to what he say. He doesn't say, I don't believe in God. He says, of course I believe in God. I just saw the miracles. I believe in God. I'm a religious person. Amalek comes and he tells you, I, of course I'm a religious person. Of course. He believes that God is his God. But he has doubt. Amalek in Gimatria is doubt. Is Safak. Be Gimatria Safak. What does he have? He says, He's asking, I know that there's a God, I know he's protecting the Jewish nation, I know he takes care of me, but 
כשהולכים בדרך הטבע, in things that God put to nature, when he gave it to nature, הקד... כשהולכים בדרך הטבע, הקדוש ברוך הוא מראה ניסים, God shows us miracles, but when does he show miracles? חג הפסח, in the holiday of Pesach, he shows us a miracle, שעד קריאת ים סוף, when he split the Red Sea, that was a miracle, when the man came down, that was a miracle. אבל אחרי שסיימו לאכול את המן, but once they finished eating the man, and now they're going to go into the earth Israel, במשך כל היום כולו, or even in that day, that they were eating the man, in the entire day, afterwards, after the man, with the man, they saw a miracle. God gave them food for it. But two hours later, is God there now? Two hours later? That was the question. In other words, does God care what you do? when it's, you don't do holy stuff? That's the question. Or does only God care when you do important things, like holy stuff, learn Torah, do mitzvahs? To say that God cares about things that happening, simple things that happen down here in this world? It says, no, he doesn't. That's why he told you, go to work. And if you work harder, you make more money. You don't work harder, you make less money. באמרו שכך הוא רצונו של הקדוש ברוך הוא, כמו שכתוב, רם על כל גויים אביה. This is what Amalek says. Amalek says that God is above all the nation. What do you mean he's above all the nations? He doesn't deal with stupidities. He doesn't deal with the small little things in this world. He doesn't care about that. He cares if you put on tefillin. He cares if you save a life. That's what he cares about. But a stupid thing in your, in your job, in the, over here, over there, that doesn't care. Like it's written, Ram al kol gim, Ba'aretz natan lebnei adam, the land he gave to us. God cares about the big things. He doesn't care about the small things. Amalek, what does he do? Amalek says that God is very holy, is very high. Because he's so holy, because he's so high, he doesn't care about whom? He doesn't care about us. He's too high. We all believe that God saved the Jewish nation. But when it comes to our business, you spend time at your work. When it comes to your medicine, right? You take vaccine? Most people go and take vaccine. Because what? You have to do whatever you have to do. You don't take vaccine, you become sick. You take vaccine, you don't become sick. Not talking about Corona, any other vaccine, yeah? Etc. So that's what we need to understand. Let's go to page eight. The high new, which means, she'i efshar li'ilachem be'amalek al yedei avoda shal pitam vadat. We can't fight against a Malek when a Malek comes with his thing. God doesn't care about the small little things. You can't argue with him. You know why? Because he's right. His logic is the right logic. God doesn't care about the small thing. God is God. God is what? Very high. And this is what a Malek comes. This is what Hama. This is the whole idea of Purim. God is very high. כיוון שעל זה יכול עמלק לעמוד ולנגד, because on this fact that God is so high, God is so holy, God is so lofty, עמלק can stand, עמלק can say, you wrong, I'm correct. למצוא הסברות בשכל ועד לטענות דקדושה, I can explain to you. If you believe that God, the God that cares about things, he comes all the way down to your bathroom? He cares um, how you tie your shoe? He cares what you do in the bathroom, how you cover yourself in the bathroom, you think? He goes down to the bathroom, he doesn't deal with this nonsense. He's God, he's holy. He doesn't go into the dirty parts of the world. Be'amro, and he says, Shemitzad romemut abore, because God is so lofty, Gadlut abore veniflaot abore, it says God is so great, Lo yafe lachshov sheikhpat venogea lakadosh barchu, it says we can't even think that God cares, that he will wait six hours for the food of the food. 
that a person should wait six hours between eating meat and drinking milk. He says, God, you think cares if you really, you ate a steak in the morning, right? So five hours and 45 minutes later, you want to eat ice cream. It's a problem? You think God cares about these 15 minutes? That's exactly what, 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 what can you answer? He cares, he cares about the stupid 15 minutes. I, I ate another 15 minutes or I didn't eat another 15 minutes. Maybe immediately after, I understand. But after five hours and 45 minutes, what, and you really need to wait, there's another 15 minutes. You, re you really think he cares? You really think that's what in his mind? He cannot go to sleep now because uh, Moshe is going to eat the ice cream 15 minutes early? You think that's what he cares about? Maybe if Moshe puts on filling in the morning, he cares about. Maybe if Moshe saves a life of a Jew, he cares about. But this, this is important. God doesn't care. This is a Malak. And the truth is, can you answer? There's no answer. There's no logical answer. He says God cares about big things. He doesn't care about small things like this. We're talking about a Jew that is sitting is in a situation. Just like a person knows in his soul. He wants to drink a little bit of milk. He looks at the watch. He saw there's no six hours. It's only five and a half hours. It's not six hours. So we don't drink, right? We wait until it is six hours. So why do you have to wait this half an hour? Because the only reason why we do it is why? There's no logic. It doesn't make sense. Why we do it? Because we know this is what God wants. We know. God told us, I want you to wait for six hours. Uvchen. So Amalek comes and asks you the question now. You think that's what God is waiting for you all day long to do? To wait for Moshe? To see if Moshe waits for one more half hour or less 30 minutes? He cares? He cares about the important thing. How much Moshe learned Torah? How much Moshe put on Tfilin? That's he cares about. But this, he doesn't care. You think God doesn't have to, anything to do just to wait until the minutes go by to make sure that this guy finished his uh, six hours? This is what you think God is doing, waiting all day long, doing these stupidities, waiting for half an hour over there, waiting for two minutes over, there, over here? This is the holiness of God? It says, It says, God is great. God doesn't deal with such stupidities. This is what Amalek tells you. Ach, but the truth is that we don't answer. When Amalek comes with his opinion, what do we do? Ach, ha'inyan hu, she'yehudi lo nichnas le'shakya betari al pisechet. That the Jew doesn't come and start arguing with this evil inclination according to logic. He can answer, he can try to answer according to logic. But that's not going to change the mind of Amalek. You can try to explain to him, six hours, it says this, it says, you know all these people that tell you, you know why we don't eat, uh, the, the Jews did not eat a pig? It was because at that time they didn't have refrigeration. And there's a certain uh, bug, a worm, that you can get disease from the pig if it's not refrigerated. But today we have refrigerating so you don't have to worry about it. Therefore, you can eat pig. Yeah? You can start arguing with this evil inclination that tells you. But the true answer is, you know why we don't eat pig? Because God said so. And, uh, it has nothing to do with, with uh, healthy, not healthy. This, I mean, you've got a good argument over there, but so what? I don't eat pig because God said so. 
כיוון שהקושייה היא לא בגלל שעניין זה מבלבל בשכלו. It says the person or a malek, the people who ask this question about not eating pig because it not used to be kosher, uh, not used to, uh, we didn't have refrigeration, it wasn't healthy, but today it's healthy, and all these kind of things. That's not why we keep it. And if tomorrow they're going to find out that pig is the healthiest food in the world, so what, we're going to start eating pig? We have nothing to do with it. And it who lo rotze li lase says why amalek comes up with this question says who asked this question did you know this who, what kind of people ask this question the people who don't want to do when you don't want to do you come up with this you want to eat your pig a person wants to eat his pig so he, he doesn't ask the question he says he gives you a, a, a terrorist he gives you you know what you know why in those times they didn't eat pig because it was unhealthy but today it's healthy so you can eat pig He says he's not trying to really ask a question. He's not trying to understand. He's trying to give himself a permission why it's okay to eat the pig. Or why it's okay to drink the milk even though six hours has not passed. That's what he's trying to do. He doesn't want to do God's will. אלא שמחפש הצדקה לכך שאין זה בגלל שאין לא רוצה סתם. He finds a reason Why? He says, I believe in God, but I can't believe that God wants me to eat this. Yeah, he didn't want the Jews in the desert to eat pig, because it was unhealthy. But today it's healthy, therefore you can eat pig. אלא בגלל שעל פי שכל אינו צריך לרצות בכך. ולכן, and therefore, במקום להביא טענות מעניינים אחרים, שואל הוא מיניה ובה. הייתכן לומר שבזה מונח קדוש ברוך הוא? This is what he says. You think that God cares? If you eat pig or you eat a goat, you think that God cares if you waited six hours and five hours or 45 minutes? Come on, he really doesn't care. Leida im ata mamtin ben basar lechalav shesh shahot o chamesh vachetis shahot? He cares if it's six hours or five and a half hours. Velachen, and therefore, en makom li ikanesi mo levikuach. There's no, it's not necessary to start arguing with him. Al ili ta'anot shal pitam vadat. through all kinds of reasoning. Because what bothers Amalek? It's not the logic. I know he's asking question, but it's not the question that bothers him. He's using his logic, why? Because he wants to do the bad thing. So he's telling you the reason why he's going to do the bad thing anyway. Because God, God doesn't really care five and a half hours or six hours. That's what he's telling you. וכמו עניין השוחד, this is just like bribery, שיעבר עיניך חכמים ויסלף דברי צדיקים. That bribery blinds the eyes of the sages and it takes skew the words of the righteous. והיינו שגם מה שהתורה קוראתו בשם חכם, אם היא talking about somebody that the Torah calls a sage, הנה כשלוקח שוחד, when a sage takes bribery, הרי זה מעוור ענייי חכמים, he becomes blind. ואם הדברים אפילו בנוגע לפרוטה אחת, and how much more so when it is one penny, שנחשבת על פי דין לשוחד, that it is considered to be bribery, ללא נפקא מינא אם הדין הוא עשיר או עני, without bothering to, to even ask if the guy, if the judge is rich or poor, הרי על אחת כמה וכמה, over here the guy, you know what is bribery? He wants to eat the pig. He wants to drink the milk. He's completely bribed. And now he's using his brain to tell you why it's okay to eat the, the, the meat or to drink the, the milk. You know why it's okay? Because God doesn't really care. God is too lofty, he's too high to care. And this is what a Jew says. לא מצד עניין של טעם ודת. When the, the Jew comes and fights against the civil inclination, he doesn't use logic. אלא, he's going to do it מצד עניין הגורל. He's going to do it because it's our lot. This is גורל. The lot. This is the whole idea of פורים. You know why we don't listen to, the, to our evil inclination? Because of פורים. What's the connection? Because of גורל. Let's see. כתיב, it says, יעקב חבל נחלתו. 
It says, the portion of God is his people, Yaakov. Shetergumo, Adav Achsantia. That it, the, the, the Targum is Adav Achsantia. What does it mean? Hare Adav perusho Koral. Adav means Goral. Goral, Lat. Shezehu Ainyan de Manaim Goralenu. Like we says, Manaim Goralenu. How sweet is our Goral, is our Lat. It says, what do you mean? What sweet is our goral, our lot? What does that mean? Vekevan shezehu inyan shel goral, since this is a goral, where's the goral here? Hine bechek yutal et agoral, umehashem kol mishpato. It says, in the lap is thrown the goral, and everything comes from God. What does that mean? En beze inyan shel sechel, it has got nothing to do with logic. למה נפל הגורל באופן כך או באופן אחר? Why the goral fell in such a manner or another manner? You know when you have ten kids and you have one lollipop and you need to give the ten kids one lollipop no matter what you're going to give to everybody's going to complain the other nine are going to complain, right? So what do you do? You can do it in such a way that they're not going to complain How are you going to do that? Make a goral Make a lottery And then once the lottery is set aside, everybody is happy. You had a chance, you got yours. He won, he's Goral. Now everybody, nobody's going to complain now. You had a chance, and he won. ואפילו כשמתקבל בשכל שכך צריך ליפול הגורל, אין עושים זה בגלל אותו רצה שכל. And sometimes we even says, you know what? He deserved it. He deserved the lollipop because he was the best boy today. But that's not why we gave him the lollipop. Why didn't we give him the lollipop? Not because he deserved it. We gave him the lollipop because of the goral. Sometimes it makes sense. The goral falls on the right person. But that's not why we gave him the, why we gave him the lollipop. Not because it makes sense. We gave him because it was the goral. He won. This is what the goral said. This is what the Jew says. This is what the Jew says. This is, says, the Jew says, this is because of the Goral. She nafal be Goralo li valed yudi. says, do you know why I don't eat pig? Nothing to do with hair, nothing to do with this, nothing to do with that. I don't care what you're saying. You know why I don't eat pig? Because I, am, I happen to be a Jew. And Jews don't eat pig. Forget the logic. You know why we don't eat pig? Because I'm a Jewish and Jews don't eat pig. Do you know why I have to wait six hours? Because I'm a Jew. And just wait six hours. There's no logic there. This is what's called Goral. What is the Goral? The Goral is that, I, you know how many people live in this world? Six billion. How many Jews there are? Maybe 10, 12 million. And out of all these six billion, only these 12 million were chosen, they had the Goral not to eat pig. That's why I don't eat pig. נפל בגורלו להיוולד יהודי, בן אברהם, יצחק ויעקב, המדסן אוף אברהם, יצחק או יעקב, שזהו עניין שאינו תלוי כלל בעבודתו ויגירתו. This has got nothing to do with my work. And this is the funny part. And you know all these people, these Jews, that want to eat pig and they come with an excuse why you're allowed to eat pig? They have all these excuses. Because it's healthy today, it used not to be healthy, but today it's healthy. If you tell him, Okay, you can eat pig, but you, you, you know that you're not Jewish. What is he going to tell you? Of course I'm Jewish. What do you mean I'm not Jewish? He tells you, 100% I'm Jewish. What do you want to eat? What do you care? He says, you're not religious. You're not interested, right? So you're not Jewish. So he says, if he knows he's not Jewish, he says, forget about it. Of course I'm Jewish. I'm a Jew who eats pig. That's what he will tell you. Right? But of course, but, but, but you don't believe in God. You don't believe that God is saying, what do you care? Say from now on, you're not Jewish. He's not going to be willing to do that. Why? Because he knows this is Goraleinu. He knows his Goral was to be, to be a Jew. And that he knows it's to be a Jew. This is Purim. This is the Goral of Purim. Let's continue. It's not, it has nothing to do with logic. It comes to logic, it says, if you open up a business and you didn't work hard, 
and somebody tells you, you won, that's impossible. You didn't win. It's impossible. If you didn't work hard at your business, you're not going to make money. Nobody opens up a new business and doesn't work hard and makes money. It, it doesn't happen. Yeah? Even an old business, if you don't work hard, slowly, slowly it will go down and it will go down to garbage. You have to work hard if you open a business. Over here, it has nothing to do with working hard. You know why? You... Over here, because you were chosen. You won the lottery. That's why. When it comes to the business, it looks like you need to work hard. When you're going to try a little bit, you will know a little bit. You will learn a lot. You will know a lot. This is the same thing when it comes to kindness, when it comes to energy. In all the matters of thought, speech, and action. In all of them, you have something to do with it. What doesn't depend on you is the fact that you're Jewish. Nobody asks you if you want to become Jewish. Nobody even asks you for your opinion if you want to become Jewish or not. The reality is he was born to be a Jew. And this God says, It says, You should be to me a treasure. And then he adds, You know why you should be a treasure? Because I have all the land. It doesn't make sense. What do you mean? You should be a treasure because I have all the land. It's exactly the opposite. Because if he has all the land, this is not the reason why he chose us to be his special nation. He could choose anybody if he has the land. Why did he choose us? It doesn't make sense. Like it says in Rashi, it says you shouldn't say, The Jewish people should not say, We are the only one that belong to God. And there's no one else besides. See, if there were no other nations, you know what we would say? Alan we would does. think? Alan does. Alan does. What? Let's say there's no other nation, the only Jewish nation in the world. Mm-hmm. There's no other nation. It's only 12 million Jews in the world. You know what we say? He doesn't have a choice. He didn't choose us. He didn't choose us. We're the only human beings upon the face of the earth. That's no choice. What did he use a monkey to do his bidding? You want to use a dog? A dog can't do. Only humans can do. He specifically made six billion people. And from those six billion people, he says, I'm going to make a goral. And I'm going to choose out of the six billion people, certain people. This is what the goral is. And there's no difference between them. They're exactly the same. And you know why I chose this one, not this one? Not because he's smaller, not because he's wiser. No, it, it was a lottery. This is what Goral mean, a lottery. They're exactly the same. Kili kol ha'aret. It says, I have all the land. Ve'afal piken, and nevertheless, hem be'enai ve'lefanai leklum. It says, nevertheless, even though I have all the land, all this universe with all these six billion people, you know who I care about? What's the treasure? Only these are the treasure. The other ones are not the treasure. Ve'ainu, she'en ze mitzad tam v'dat. You'll ask God, why? Well, what do you mean, why? It was a lottery, and that, that, those guys were chosen. What do you want me to do? It has nothing to do with logic. No, they're not better, they're not smarter, they're not quicker. It was a lottery, and they won. This is what the Alter Rebbe says in Igeret HaKodesh. It's above understanding. The example for this is lottery that we have down here. This is what we say when a Jew is a Jew. 
שאין זה עניין שהיה לו איזה חלק בזה, אלא שזהו עניין שנעשה מצד הקדוש ברוך הוא. It has nothing to do with us. God decided that we're going to be Jews, that's why we're Jewish. וכאשר יהודי תופס זאת, when a Jew understands it, עזר אומר ליצר הרע, then when the יצר הרע on page 12 tells him to do the wrong thing, not to wait this half an hour, he tells the, the Jew can tell the יצר הרע, הטענה שלך היא על פי שכל, it says you coming to me according to logic, and your logic is strong. Does God care about 15 minutes? No. He doesn't care. But did God care about me when he chose me? No, it was a lottery. It could have been something else. But once I'm chosen as a lottery, it has to do with understanding? No. So just like he chose me, he chose me to wait six hours. I don't have to answer you. That's what he chose. It's not understanding. He chose me not to eat pig, even though the pig might be the healthiest food in the world. אבל אני מציאות כזו, I'm such an entity, שנפל בחלקי הגורל, that in my place there's a portion, שיש לי את הקדוש ברוך הוא, that I have God and God has me. וכל שאר העניינים אינם נוגעים לא לי ולא לקדוש ברוך הוא. In all the logic in the world, I don't care and nobody else does. וכאשר הגישה היא מצד עניין הגורל, and then when we look at life, from the fact of the Goral, Azai Yaakov alach ledarko, then we can go in our way of service of God. And then the question of Amalek doesn't bother us at all, because it has nothing to do with logic. Ve'al pizeh mitchazeket yoter akushia banogea l'ashem shel yimei apurim. Now comes a stronger question when it comes to the name of Purim. על שם הפור ולא על שם הגורל. So why do we call it פור and not גורל? We just explained why the word גורל is everything about a Jew, not פור, not in Persian. לא רק בגלל כשיש ברירה לבחור בין שם בלשון הקודש לשם בלשון שבעים האומות. Not because one is Hebrew and one is not Hebrew. צריך לבחור בשם אשר יקראו לו בלשון הקודש. You need to choose the Hebrew name. אלא במיוחד בגלל הקשר של היום טוב עניין זה עם הגורל. This has to do with the goral of whom? Of the Jews. So if you're talking about the goral that the Jews were chosen, what should it be? In which language? It should be in Hebrew, of course. Why did they prefer to call it poor in the Persian? שהרי ביטול גזירת המן באופן של יהודים הייתה אורה ושמחה סביב ליקר. How did we take off the decree of המן? היה על ידי זה שעמדו בתנועה של מסירות נפש. The evil inclination came in the days of a man and tells them, you know what? What's the problem? You want to become... It's okay? It says, what's the problem? Everything is good? It tells them, you want to become... A... You want to save yourself? You know how you serve yourself? You become... Not Jewish. Say you're not Jewish for two minutes. You save yourself afterwards, come, go back to become Jewish. It's only for a couple of days when they're allowed to kill you. For those two weeks, say you're not Jewish. And then, two weeks later, you can, you can become Jewish again. That's what they could have said. Yeah? But none of them did. They stood in Misirut Nefesh. Why? Did it make sense? No, it was the Goral. They know, I was born Jewish. I'm going to die a Jew. It's got nothing to do with any logic. No logic talks to me over here. That's what I'm going to do. ולא במעמד ומצב של עבודה שמצד טעם ודת. We're not going to do it because of understanding. ולכן יש להדגיש זאת בשם היום טוב על שם הגורל דווקא. So therefore they should have called it גורל, not poor. Not poor. והביאור הוא. So to understand this. שהחידוש של פורים הוא, what happened in פורים? שעניינו נפעל כאשר בני ישראל נמצאים במעט, במעמד ומצב שאחתי עבדי אחשורוש ענן. It says Purim happens to the Jewish nation when we are still in exile. What does it mean? We are still the slave of אחשורוש. We are still don't see miracles. We are still living in exile itself. Just like the Jews after they ate the manna the rest of the day they didn't see God. There was no God, godly revelation anymore. כלומר, בפורים רואים, in פורים we see, מה שיש בכוחו של יהודי, 
לפעול בהיותו במעמד ומצל של עבדי אחשורוש. As a Jew who doesn't see godliness, who doesn't experience holiness, and he still stands in Purim. He says, this I'm not going to do. Why? I have no good question, the answer for you, because I'm Jewish. That's why I'm going to do it. Not because I see, not because I understand, not because of nothing. I don't see godliness, I don't understand. You know why I'm not going to do it? I, I have no idea why I'm not going to do it. The only reason I'm not going to do it is because I'm Jewish. לא באופן שמורד במלכות ובורח משם, אלא הוא נמצא עם הגולה אשר הוגלתה. It says, he is in the middle of exile, תחת מלכותו של אחשורוש, under the ruling of אחשורוש. ואף על פי כן אומרים ליהודי, nevertheless, we say to the Jew, אין לך מה להתיירא. It says, don't worry, I know you don't see godliness, I, I know you don't have an answer to the guy. The professor who comes and explains to you that he doesn't make a difference Five and, a, five and a half hours or six hours. Gomer. It says, but hey, one second. We need to go according to logic. It tells you. You cannot go in front of the king and tell him, hey, you nobody. Look what happened to uh, Ukraine. Ukraine went in front of Putin. And told him what? You were nobody. What happened? You can't. You have a responsibility. You have to come and you play the game. You have to be political. You have to do it in a nice way. If you don't do it in a nice way, what happens? This is what happens. So also by Jews. When you go in front of a Hashverosh, what do you have to do? You have to do it in a nice way. You can't just tell him, you're a nobody. We can do whatever you want. We trust in God. In other words, you have to go according to nature. Ah, so if you go according to nature, maybe God is not there because you ask to go to, to nature. That's the question. And that's exactly the problem. Even if Shulchan Aruch tells you, you have to respect the king. It says, when do you have to respect the king? You only have to respect the king when the king doesn't tell you to do something against godliness. If the king tomorrow in America tells you, you know what, it's illegal to do circumcision, you need to be a doctor, you cannot be a rabbi, you make circumcision, and forget about it, it's an unnecessary operation, you're not doing it at all. Are we going to listen? No. no. If the, it says to us, uh, what, what, whatever rule is against the Torah, you have to mechal Shabbos. No. We only listen to the king when when he, when he tells us things not against the Torah. Once he tells us to do things against the Torah, we don't listen to the king. This is a Malik. A Malik in Russia, yeah? Think about, what, in Russia there used to be groups of people, of Jews, who used to study Torah in hiding. They were Bacharim. And many times they were studying, and when the KGB came in, and of course the KGB were Jews also, as you know, came into the room, the rabbi used to run away. And he left them with the kids. You know, they're not going to arrest the kids. They're just kids. They want to, they want to arrest the rabbi. You know, so they used to tell the kids, they used to tell the kids this, this, this thing. It says, I don't understand. There's a rule in the Torah that says, Dina de Malchuta Dina. It says, you have to listen to the rules of the king. And the king says, not to learn Torah. It, besides it, it says, it says the rule in the Torah, rabim lehatot. You have to go out to the majority. And who's the majority? We are the majority. And we're telling you not to learn Torah. This is a Malik. Can you answer? It's a good It's a straight answer. What, the only answer is, we Jews, we do whatever God says. I, I, I don't know what you're talking about. But it says, but it says in, the, in your Torah that you have to respect the king. It says, what do you do? Okay, the Ita be Midrash, just like it wrote down in the Midrash, Odot divrei Hananiah, Mishael, Vazariah, Lemalka, Nebuchad, Nazar. The three prophets, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, brought in front of the king, Nebuchad, Nazar. And what did he want them to do? He wanted to do idol worship. And what did they tell him? Now, these guys were... You have to be, they were respected. They, he, he used them as advisors. 
And now they are going to be respecting the king. They're not guys who didn't respect the kings. As you see, they were the advisors of the king. So it says, what happened? They, and this is what they, ta- they, they told Nebuchadnezzar in his face. What did they tell them? Im at at melech. They told him, if you want to take taxes from us, doesn't matter what amount. You're a king, we have to listen to you. You want to get tax 2%, 5%, 20%, 30%, 40%. You're the king. Cannot, there's nothing we can do. But if you want us to do idol worship, you and the dog are equal. You're a dog for us. We look, we look at you like a dog. This is what they answered the king. You want to put us taxes? We, we're royal subjects. You want us to go against the Torah? You and the dog are equal. And they said it. According to the Torah, they had to be political. They cannot just say such things. They're endangering the entire Jewish nation. And this was also in the days of Purim. This is what happened in the days of Purim, but not only by the prophets. It happened by all the Jews in all the countries of the king. 127 countries. Let's go to page 16. This is what we said to a Jew. A Jew might think my job is to connect to God only when it comes to holiness. Only when it comes to shul, when it comes to tefillin, when it comes to learning Torah. That's not enough. You have to know there's parts of you who are slaves of Achashverosh. Which parts? You go out to your business. You go out to things. And over there you might think, how am I going to run my business without cutting corners over here, without stealing over there, without doing this, without taking some money under the table. You can't make a living. It's impossible to live like this. That's what you would think. It says you have to make your business also a Yom Tov. You have to bring godliness into the poor, not into the Goral, into the business that doesn't see godliness. Until also the non-Jews should know that the days of Purim is a Yom Tov that the Jews celebrate. Why? That Haman, Amalek, came to us in our business and he told us, over here, don't listen to God. And we told him we're Jews. We're listening to God even when it doesn't make sense. Even when we're closing, all the other stores are going to be open on Shabbos. We're going to be the only store that is going to be closed on Shabbos. And we're going to make money. And Amalek is going to tell you it's impossible. 80% of business, you know what it is? It's on the weekend. How are you going to make money? And we're telling him because we're Jews. And that's why we call it poor. That not only we know, because the things that we know, the goy doesn't see. The, when you go to shul, when you put on tefillin, the goyim don't see. But do you know what the goyim do see? When all the goyim open the stores on Shabbos, and they see that this store is closed on Shabbos, and this guy is still making money, maybe even more than them, you know what they say? This is Purim. You know why he's making more money? Because he's a Jew. God chose him. They know. This is what the name is, Pur. And it's not enough to, be, to do it in, in Hebrew. The guy has to know. And the only way he knows it, it's when it's in business, not when it's in shul. That's why we call this Yom Tov Purim. That even the non-Jews know that this is the specialty of the Jews, that they were the chosen nation. In Yanoshel Purim, this is what Purim, Shegam Goi Roe, that also a non-justice, 
שבאותה שעה עצמה שיהודי במעמד ומצב של עבדי אחשוורוש, that even though a Jew is still a slave of אחשוורוש, he still is a Jew even in his business, even in matters that you don't see godliness, even there he keeps being a Jew and he knows that God is the one who's running the show. ולכן צריכים לומר לו שהימים האלה נקראים פורים. Therefore we need to tell him that these days are called פורים על שם הפור, because of the poor. אלא שישנו עניין הפור שהפיל המל, there's the poor that המן gave us, וישנו עניין דה נהפוך הוא, and then there's the opposite עניין, how we overcame it and turned this poor into the best thing possible.